Welcome. The purpose of these brief webinars are to provide targeted, in-depth information supporting knowledge and application of the Illinois Early Childhood Competencies. The focus of this webinar is going to be a tour of the Illinois ECE Competency Assessment Toolbox. This webcast is going to provide an overview of the assessment tools, tasks that have been, been developed at every level, levels 2, 3, 4, and 5, uh, for you to use or customize as you'll see fit. And we'll talk about that a little bit. Describe how the toolbox is organized so you can find your way through, and describe how the assessments are actually organized and categorized as well. Just a couple important things to note. The next two slides of this presentation do give an overview of the introductory information that we're about to talk about. So the organizing schemata for the toolbox, what the assessments relate to in terms of content areas, et cetera. Right now, we're going to take you to the Gateways to Opportunity website where you can find the toolbox and walk you through the whole process of identifying and finding assessments. So here we are on the Gateways to Opportunity homepage. You'll notice that there's the Enter he Search Here button in the top, and all you need to do there is type in ECE Toolbox. And hit Search. And then once you do that, you'll see that the toolbox has come up. So if you click on that particular site, you'll see toolbox overview. So this just describes to you what you'll find. You'll notice that all the documents organized by competency and content area are available as a Word doc file or a PDF. The toolbox is organized around the seven gateways content areas, which we're all very familiar with, and assessments are included within each content area. These assessments are exemplars. Uh, one of our hopes is that as people use the master rubrics, that the assessment toolbox will grow with assessments that other faculty have submitted that are tied to the rubrics in the state. So you'll see it's organized by levels two, three, four, and five, and they're based on alignment between the targeted competency and the highest assessment target. Uh, of note, in assessment categories, human growth and development, health, safety, and well-being, and professional and personal, personal development, there are two assessment choices for each of these levels. So I'm gonna scroll down, and what we're gonna focus on for our discussion is the area of health, safety, and nutrition. So if you could bear with me while I find that. excuse me, human growth and development. Now you'll see here, there are two, as noted, assignment choices. So there's a child study project as an assessment choice, and there's observing early childhood development and learning as an assessment choice. These assessments are available at level two. So if you're assessing competency within level two, that is the assignment that you would select, levels two through four. Remember, there is no level three assessment, but you'll notice for some areas, for example, health, safety, and well-being, there's the level two, the level two, and three, which would be given at level three to assess competency in level three and level two proceeding. So we're just going to spend a few minutes and talk through these different levels. So I'm going to open this document. And what you'll notice in terms of this document is that it's organized by level. It has the descriptor. It has the competencies that it aligns with the corresponding NACI and IPTS standards. It then includes a series of directions. Um, and each of these different pieces of the assignment are tied to different parts of the assessment. So you'll see when you get down here, the reflection has a series of directions associated with it. The directions are tied to each aspect of the competency being assessed. So at level two, each of the three human growth development competencies 
are embedded not only in the directions, but then assessed through student responses in terms of the reflection. If we just spend another minute and go over to the level two through four assessment, you'll note as you look at this that the formatting is exactly the same as is the organization. What changes, so here's the HCG 1, 2, 3, and 4 competencies that are tied to different levels. But one thing that's important to note is that the directions in terms of the post-reflection have expanded, and they've expanded to encompass that fourth human growth and development competency. If you scroll further down, you'll notice the assessment rubric is li listed at the end of each of the competencies. Um, we'll talk about this in more detail. One thing that's important to note about the assessment rubric is how easy it is to integrate into your assessment systems within your courses. So the development of the rubric is already completely done. If you look at levels two through five, again, same formatting, same organization, the only thing that has changed at this level is that there are now six competencies being assessed. So as noted previously, there'll be an expansion here in terms of the reflection items. Community colleges need to remember that if they are articulating with a four-year university, they would include those level five competencies. Nancy's going to go into more discussion regarding the rubric at this point in time. Yeah, we, we talked about if you've already done, hopefully you have done the assessing competencies in your program, which really discussed the master rubric and how to understand those, how those are a description of the competency performance. Uh, we're going to just talk a little bit about, this is a good example, what John has walked you through in this tour is a good example of, okay, here's a task at the level I'm entitled to or the level I'm responsible to, depending on your articulation that I'm going to assess my students to. Here's a task that will produce that evidence. Here's a rubric that will assess that evidence and give me assessment data on how my students are meeting that competency or not. Uh, and so, and this is what Jana has walked through, what's in the toolbox is very, very specifically by content area. There is an assessment for each content area, sometimes there's multiple examples, but there is an assessment task and rubric that assesses that entire content area for whatever level you're looking for. Uh, that you might want to find. But if you are looking at your syllabi and you've said, you know, we do this really great assignment in that course, that's why I marked that column as that's where we assess it, because I knew we were doing that great um, assessment or instructional cycle assignment or uh, observation and assessment with children um, assignment. You knew that some assignment lived there that you could that this you could see if they met this competency through. And you don't want to do an additional assignment to that one because you as a faculty like that assignment that you've developed. That is still completely doable and in that that's the case where you would want to customize the rubrics. So then you would go into all seven, not just the one that seems to apply, like, like for instance let's say you do an instructional cycle uh, assignment where you ask students to plan instruction to implement that instruction and then to reflect on the implementation uh, in, a, in a course. And you want to use that as one of your assessment activities. You could go into all seven rubrics and, and look at them line for line, competency for competency, what competencies you've aligned with that assignment and make a custom rubric. Basically, just copy and paste and take just those lines of the rubric that apply to make a custom rubric for your instructional cycle assignment um, that would get you that would still be producing data if your community college partners or your four-year partners are assessing using a different task that's okay because you're all using the same rubric so you're, you can still bring your data together and look at it if you need to do that for the purposes of articulation or whatever um, but the one thing you need to remember if you go the customized route and I will say at ISU we do that uh, one thing you have to be sure of is that you make sure that over the course of your program, in different assignments or different tasks, however you've chosen to do that, every line of all seven rubrics to the level you're responsible or entitled to, 
you have used and are assessing somewhere because that you want to be sure you've still got it. So you can either go the content area route where you know you've got the rubric in its whole and the, this task in, is entirely focused on this content area, or you can go this customizable route as we've described uh, where you might go in and say, okay, uh, this assignment does produce a piece of evidence that shows me they meet HGD1. If I go to the Kerr rubric, it shows me that they meet Kerr 3 and 4 lines. And if I go to the assess observation and assessment rubric, it shows me that they're meeting line 2 and line 5. Uh, you could take all those lines out, make a customizable rubric for that task. You would just have to go back and make sure that in other assignments across required courses that you're hitting all the lines all in, you know, and there are obviously 56 rubric lines because there are 56 competencies. And you've got to show you're hitting those if you're talking about entitlement through level five, if not only to your level. One other thing that we'll note on the main gateways page is that there's also the master rubric organization and so again it's the same color coding scheme that you're used to and here you have a list of each of the master rubrics by content area again provided in word and pdf files and these rubrics have the choices Nancy outlined associated with them. You can either use an entire rubric tied to one assessment or you can customize it based on individual needs. So thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we'll also note that there is within your handout a brief overview that gives you a description of how to access the website overall. And so thank you so much for joining us and we hope to see you in future webinars.